On the first page, it says at the top, an official website of the United States government and a link to Here's How You Know. So we know we're on the official OSHA website here. Radial arm saws and a description of them. Operator involvement for cross-cutting. The operator pushes the wood away from him or herself against a fence. For rip cuts, the blade is set parallel to the fence and the stock is pushed through. The saw blade rotates toward the operator who feeds stock opposite direction. A description of operator involvement and then three points here that it likes to go into detail. The first is about point of operation and it lists your potential hazards. Contact with the turning blade. If the saw blade is able to go past the edge of the table, the blade could come in contact with your body and the material may move with cuts. So these are the solutions that OSHA expects. Enclose the upper half of the saw with a fixed hood. And this has to be one that covers up all the way down to the arbor, unlike some of the older machines that are in some historical videos and the one pictured on this page. That part also requires on the lower half a self-adjusting floating guard that rises and falls automatically adjusting to the thickness of the stock. Make sure the saw has a return device. This is both to limit the travel and to help keep the saw carriage from just vibrating forward on its own, just from its own operational inertia. They also suggest you should actually level your machine so that the front end is a little bit higher so that gravity takes it downward. That doesn't mean your table is not parallel and level with your arm, but it just means it's not level with the ground and gravity. You can install an adjustable stop to limit the travel, which I mentioned in my longer YouTube video. You can use limit chains or other effective means to keep the saw from moving beyond the front or back edge of the table. Additional safety measures, securely fasten material to avoid unwanted movement and cuts. Hold down clamps, that's a good idea. Measure boards against a stop gauge or turn the saw off if measuring by rule. Wait for the blade to stop before moving materials. That means, yeah, when you're setting up your thing, don't have the machine running and line it up and do your little adjustments. Those are all common sense safety things. Then the second section is about kickbacks. Stock caught in the blade or fed in the wrong direction may be thrown back at the operator. This is primarily for ripping operations. For ripping, install non-kickback fingers on both sides of the saw blade. And for this, the non-kickback fingers on the leading edge is usually that shroud it needs to be pushed and adjusted so that it's just above touching the wood so the wood can't lift up. And on the back side, it's the anti-kickback fingers. Use a spreader in ripping operations to prevent the cut in the wood from immediately closing. Make sure the stock is in the correct direction, posting a label or warning on the hood of the direction of saw rotation. A lot of them new machines say, do not rip from this direction. And additional safety measures during cross-cutting, operate the saw from the side of the table with the handle. That recommends that you use this machine as a left-handed operation. That's the preferred method. We're all used to using it as a right-handed operation and putting our body in the immediate path of the travel should the carriage launch at us. But the preferred and safer method is to operate it with your left hand and be on the left side of your machine. The other area of concern is flying particles. The cutting action of the blade may throw wood chips, splinters, and broken saw teeth. I've never had broken saw teeth fly, fly at me, but that is always a potential with saw blades, right? During cross cutting, operate the saw from the side of the table with the handle, and our handle is on the right side, so that would put your whole body on the right side, which is operating the saw with your left hand. And the last thing is always wear eye protection. And that's it. That's the entirety of the OSHA guidelines. There's nothing about the trigger needing to be on the handle. And there's nothing about the front facing dust port being a problem. There is another general statement about power tools in general that says power controls and operating controls should be located within easy reach of the operator while they are at their regular work location, making it unnecessary for them to reach over the cutter to make adjustments. And that's referencing tools that have either the machine where the switch is on a back wall or farther away from the tool. It needs to be right there with the operator. But that doesn't mean it needs to be on a handle, on a trigger switch. You want to see the rest of the radial arm saw stuff specifically as opposed to the summary sheet? It's all right here. Here it is. Uh, there's the upper hood and the blade guard issue. Ripping should be provided with non-kickback fingers or dogs. An adjustable stop to prevent the saw from traveling beyond the table or build your your table bigger. Insulation in such a manner that the front end should be slightly higher than the rear or having a spring return or both. And ripping or plowing shall be against the direction in which the saw turns. That's it. 
Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more technical theater content.